Hi and welcome. Hey, if this is the first time you've clicked on one of my videos, thanks for uh, taking a look. And if you're a subscriber, thanks a lot for clicking the subscribe button. I really appreciate that. Uh, you know, these days we need all the subs we can get. So, uh, you know, again, uh, thanks a lot. So today I'm going to take a look at uh, one of my toys, which is a Hamig 8028 Spectrum Analyzer, which is this guy right here. This is a uh, compact uh, Spectrum Analyzer. It is uh, from the late 80s, uh, made by Hamig, which is a German company. Uh, it's a, you know, nice little unit. Spectrum Analyzer itself is, you know, handy tool if you're doing a lot of radio work because you can look at the signals on the frequency domain instead of just the uh, time domain. So let me explain that really quickly. An oscilloscope displays signals on a time domain. So if you're familiar with it, there's a sine wave that you see on the oscilloscope screen, and that's basically voltage in the vertical over time, which is your horizontal. Uh, a spectrum analyzer is different in that it turns that signal around and lets you look at uh, the overall frequency components that make up that signal. So with this you know, sine wave signal that you have, there's not a number of frequencies that are actually building that signal and it's, you're seeing the sum of all those signals. A spectrum analyzer, on the other hand, shows you the frequencies that make up that signal. So you get a, something that looks like a, a peak on a mountain and you can see how uh, uh, clean that signal is by uh, looking at it in the frequency domain. Like I said, uh, it's good for radio work. Uh, it is not as important in the you know retro computing space. There's very few places you could actually make uh, use of a spectrum analyzer. Depending on what your hobbies are and what you're into, a spectrum analyzer can be a great tool. And this is you know a pretty uh, reasonable entry into that spectrum analyzer space. The Hamag 8028, uh, you know, is from the late 80s. It's designed to be connected to a oscilloscope. So you plug it into your X and Y inputs in your oscilloscope, and it provides a visualization of the uh, uh, frequency domain on your oscilloscope screen. Yeah, let's take a look at it and uh, pull it apart and see what it's all about. So here's the unit. It's a uh, nice compact, you know, little guy here. I'd say it's three inches tall or so, and uh, I guess a foot wide. Uh, fits under your oscilloscope nicely. If you've got a, a Tech 465 like I do, it's a perfect match for it. This box here is like a mainframe. So I guess Hamig had a line of instruments using the same mainframe, and uh, that means you can basically pull out these modules from the mainframe and away you go, which is, you know, uh, not a new idea, certainly not in 1989, uh, but it's a cool thing to have. So, uh, you know, there it is. So this this uh, setup has got both the spectrum analyzer on the right hand side and it's also got the matching tracking generator. Tracking generator is super handy if you're doing radio work and particularly you're doing filters. So if you're making your own filters, you're winding your own coils and stuff like that, uh, tracking generator lets you analyze those coils because it basically creates a signal that goes through the entire frequency range that's being displayed by the spectrum analyzer. So it's a, a quite handy. Units themselves are, you know, pretty compact. Let's back here. So we've got our little plug-in modules. I don't know, this thing weighs two pounds. Nice and lightweight. Pretty high-tech stuff for 1989, I'm sure. And it just slides back in there. There we go, back in. Controls on the unit are pretty standard. Let's take a look here. So we've got attenuation uh, on a spectrum analyzer. Uh, they're extremely sensitive. So when you're measuring a signal, you want to turn on all your attenuation to start and then work backwards because you can blow the front end on these things really easily. There is a video filter. Video filter is was a little confusing for me because I thought, you know, what's a video filter? for starters, so what does it mean exactly? Uh, I thought it was something to do with, you know, NTSC signals or PAL signals and, you know, optimizing the display of those. And maybe I was overthinking it. What it actually does is it just cleans up the output video on your scope, providing a, a filter that will, will allow 
you know, really low level signals to appear in the noise. There's a lot of background noise in these things. Um, and so this helps clean that up a bit. This is your bandwidth for the internal filters for the signal. Um, here we ha have the uh, scan width display. So it can go from 0 0.05 megahertz to 50 megahertz on, on the uh, scan, which is quite a large frequency range. Here we adjust our frequency, and then there's con uh, outputs here for the oscilloscope, and there's the connections for the tracking generator. Tracking generator again has uh, attenuators on the front end. It looks like someone's marked with the uh, uh, felt pen what you should be using in the test environment to remind people what should be on and what shouldn't be. Uh, generally speaking, you know, again, when you're measuring a signal with one of these things, turn all the uh, attenuators on full blast first and then start reducing them one at a time. And this one has a, a even 10 dB on each attenuator so I guess you can mix and match them although it seems odd that they've marked three of these one two three and they didn't mark this one even though they're all 10 uh, dB uh, attenuators I don't know maybe something I don't know about it. Here is your level for the uh, si the output signal for the tracking generator and yeah that's about it so it's a pretty straightforward unit let's plug it in the scope and take a look at uh, how it looks when, when it's all connected up so as you can see it kind of looks like it is uh you know almost been designed with the tech 465 in mind it's uh, you know right the same size as this scope uh i wouldn't be that surprised because this was a super popular scope for years and years and years so maybe the designers at uh, hammock thought it would be a good idea to um make their devices uh, pretty much compatible, even though Hamig has their own line of, of oscilloscopes. And so, yeah, anyways, quite a nice fit. I think they're a good combo between the two of them. One thing this unit has is it's got this funky BNC connector. These are actually a standard connector, but they're super rare. So what I had to do on this one is I, when I rebuilt the cables, I had to, you know, go through and uh, fabricate my own cable using the existing connector from the old uh, flimsy cable that had come with the unit and that had long since broken. So that two pin BNC thing goes in the uh, X, Y out. And then we've got uh, cables going to the X and Y inputs on the oscilloscope. And let's power this guy up, see what we got. Over here, switch this to, it's in X, Y mode, good and then we'll power up the spectrum analyzer and here you can see the spectrum display right there it's going let's try and focus this just a little bit see if that'll help maybe crank the intensity down for the video there we go okay so there's our spectrum display it's just displaying noise right now um i mentioned the video filter when you turn the video filter off and on you can see the noise is a lot more with it off than with it on there's, you know, times you use this and times you don't, right? As with anything. Here's my bandwidth. Uh, this is 250 kilohertz. This is 12.5 kilohertz. What I'm going to do now is just like a quick little experiment for you. So basically, a spectrum analyzer is a super sensitive radio receiver. And that being the case, uh, if I take a little piece of wire there and plug it into the BNC input. Oh, let's turn those attenuators on. That's my piece of wire in there. Um, I will be able to see the FM radio spectrum on the display. And so you can see those lines. Those are all the local radio stations where I live. And let's go pull this up a little bit. Okay, there we go. So you can see each one of these uh, radio stations here. And if I uh, put it to, you know, 100, 100, this is 100 megahertz. It's floating back and forth a bit. The unit hasn't warmed up, so it probably explains, you know, a little bit of uh, why it would float back and forth a bit. I think these are supposed to warm up for an hour before um, actually using them. Anyways, you can see here, center frequency is 100 megahertz, which should be right about there on the oscilloscope. And then there's a, a channel, you know, at like 102 megahertz or something like that. And another one at 105 or whatever. I don't know exactly what these what these are right now doing a little bit of math let's uh, switch this over here there we go okay so so basically i switched this down to one megahertz and you can see uh you know 100s there this is 100.5 megahertz 
this is like 101 to 102.5 uh, and 103, I guess. Those are all frequencies, local radio stations where I live, and it's picking them up right now, and you can, you can clearly visualize them. What I can do is I can also zoom into those signals so I can take a look here. So let's just take a, take a quick look at this. So here I'm switching the scan width to a lower level. So now I'm able to zoom in and take a look at those, that frequency, and I can center it on the screen. And that one's, you know, roughly a hundred. With only three digits, it's only gonna show you a certain amount of resolution, obviously. So this is under 101. And there's this one here that's a little bit lighter. Let's take a look here. There's 103, you know, roughly 103, and I think there's a station at 102.7 or something like that locally. You can also see on this display, there's a lot of information going across. It's not a clean signal. And that's because it's an FM radio station and they're modulating FM. So there's a whole set of frequencies that are being used in order to create this signal um, that we can hear. So anyways, it's, it's quite cool. Okay, so now I'm going to use a, uh, a signal generator in order to generate a bit of a signal. We'll take a look at a clean signal coming into the uh, spectrum analyzer. So I got this set to uh, random frequency, 9.37 megahertz. I will crank the Hamig unit down here. And I'll turn the RF output on. I got the output level at low and you can clearly see there's my signal. Okay, so there's my signal. I can pull the attenuation off a bit so we can see it a little bit better. And then maybe I'll adjust this here so I can just take a look at it. And you'll notice that the uh, signal is a lot cleaner than the one from the FM radio station because it's not FM modulated. The last little test here, what I'm going to do is I'll uh, adjust the frequency down to exactly 9 megahertz and that will allow me to calibrate at a really rough level where the uh, frequency tuning on the Hamig is just so you can see it. Uh, so basically uh, bring this down to exactly 9 megahertz. Um, this unit hasn't warmed up and it's not connected to my frequency standard so it's going to be close to 9 megahertz, but it's not going to be perfect. Uh, it's just the way this is a strictly analog signal generator, and yeah, it definitely needs to warm up. Let's lock the frequency. 9.0002, good enough. So all I need to do is take uh, the center frequency here and get it uh, right to the center of the scope screen. There we go. That is really close to 9 megahertz. Um, you know, it's as close as it's going to get anyways. And so you can actually use the graticules on the oscilloscope to see what sort of input frequency you're working with as long as you know what you're starting with and what your center frequency is. The thing I don't like about this unit is that it doesn't have a lot of resolution on the center frequency. It would be great if there's, you know, four or five more digits. Um, but for, you know, standard radio work, it's, you know, going to be fine. Okay, well, let's take this thing apart. Let's remove the uh, cables here. Uh, actually, let's power this thing off first. There's an IEC connector on the back there. The mainframe itself has got not much to it. There's a power supply here. You can set it to 125, 220, 110, 240 volts. Made by Hamig GmbH. Excuse my German pronunciation. Frankfurt am Main. So good old Frankfurt. Uh, made in, where is that made? Made in West Germany. Look at that. So that's pretty, pretty good uh, indication of the time frame of this unit here. There's uh, just on the tags, IEC, standards, da 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 da. Um, and it is the dual mainframe, HM8001. So this is the mainframe unit itself. This thing, I'm not, not really sure what that is. It's molded in there for some reason. Maybe somebody knows what that's all about. It's got some nice uh, handles here on the side to wrap the power cable around which is great and it's got these two uh, BNC connectors which don't actually output anything with the spectrum analyzer maybe it does for um, one of the other uh, devices but uh, nothing comes out with the uh, spectrum analyzer uh, unit 
nice handle on the side so you can carry it. It's nice and compact. You can go to Starbucks with it, analyze some signals. And, you know, standard nice feet here. Got some flip up feet, which is great. Nice angle. Uh, previous owner slapped the Velcro all over the place. I'm not sure why. I liked Velcro, but you know, hey, I'm not here to judge. Do whatever they want. One day, maybe I'll tear that Velcro off. Okay, so let's uh, take a look at these modules here. Um, the design of this is actually kind of nice. Uh, the Tektronix 7000 scope that I have has a similar sort of mainframe system, but the latching and release mechanism seems like it's almost over-engineered and it's a bit difficult to use and you kind of feel like you're going to break it every time you pull, pull one of the modules out. So I kind of like that. Simple, whatever. Uh, we've got, oh, uh, well, this unit here, if you take a look, it's by Hamig S-A-R-L and it is made in France. And we've got a date code of uh, June of 1990. So, uh, Looks like this module at least is made in France and not in Germany like the other one, or West Germany as the other one was. Let's pull the tracking generator out. Now this one's a lot lighter than the uh, other module and oh yeah, same thing. Made in France and this one was made in May of 1990. So um, yeah, a little bit earlier, but uh, obviously from the same production run. I'm gonna try to get a shot of inside the uh, unit the mainframe let's focus this up there we go so we can see the uh, card edge connectors in there and it might be uh, hard to see but actually it looks like all those card edge uh, that each connection has been labeled on the unit there so you can see there's a you know uh, input output 5 20 volt to uh, power supply all sorts of cool stuff in there so that's kind of neat that they did that, that they did that labeling. Uh, not a lot of equipment that I have um, has that. And actually, here I just found a date code on the mainframe. Let's see if I can get a picture of that. Date code is 0589. Mainframe made in uh, 89. These guys made a year later, uh, shipped together, put in a box, and sold to the customer. Well, there you have it. Let's pull this thing apart. Looks like we got uh, a couple of screws back here. And hey, if there's any reason I need more subs, it's because this screwdriver sucks. And it's got a bit of uh, metal pointing out in the back, which is uh, dangerous. So if I had more subs, I could afford a proper screwdriver. Okay, so let's take a look inside here. What do we got? Oh, wow. There is uh, some sort of RF module in there. This big thing, look at that. Like it's a, uh, it's definitely all in a shield and I'm not gonna pull this apart, but uh, yeah, made in Korea. Uh, looks like it might be 1987 and it's plugged into another RF module at the back there. So all shielded, that's not coming apart anytime soon. Taking a look, there's a uh, ribbon jumper cable that goes to that edge connector on the back. And there's a couple of resistors there on that board. And it looks like this is probably the same board that's used for all their modules because they've got a space for some chips here. Looks, looks like a header, another header potentially in there. And taking a look at it, we've got you know some standard dip chips here. There's this interesting little sub board we've got and there's a uh, crystal on there. And we've got here a, oh, this is a switch unit right there. So there's our switching unit that switches the uh, scan width um, to the various settings. If we look, there's, I'm not quite sure what this is all about because there's this part here which you know should be the switch but there seems to be wipers in in this module and actually i'll try to get the camera in there we can see if we can see a little bit better see it almost appears there's there's wipers there as well so quite an interesting little custom switch the switch here is marked 0690 
which makes a lot of sense because um, you know the date code on this thing is 06 uh, 0690 there got that and then we've got what appears to be a variable resistor which is used to adjust the scan width and that's about it so just a handful of chips and uh, an RF module and you can see you could just let's take a look here you might be able to see in this hole here you just see there's a couple of coils in there um, some sort of uh, maybe it's a variable uh, like a filter a bandpass filter of some sort um, I'll do a Google search for that part number and uh, see what it comes up with but I'm not too hopeful so I did a Google search and actually got a hit on this uh, module which I'm a bit surprised about it came back as a uh, cable TV input converter slash frequency agile input converter so uh, you know this is uh, looks like it's a uh, consumer component from a you know an old TV converter back in the 80s you may or may not remember these if you were around then uh, and they just bolted that consumer component into this spectrum analyzer and actually that makes a lot of sense because a spectrum analyzer is essentially a radio receiver that just instead of display uh, sorry instead of uh, making noise for those radio signals it puts out a display of the radio signals and so yeah using a standard component like that could uh, make sense and cut down on costs and certainly this unit is uh, you know designed for small labs repair shops um, you know university use and stuff like this it's not the same type of uh, technology as you know a HP 8500 series uh, spectrum analyzer and so you know having a consumer component hey that's that's not that bad an idea you can see the shielding there the connector uh, Let's just see if we can get that in the shot. You see the connector goes into that input converter module and it's going right to the front here and it has been sort of soldered on. Oh, soldered onto the attenuators there. That's where that's going. Let's get that in focus. So you can see that's going to the attenuator buttons. Um, and then there must be this cable here well, it's hard to say where that input's coming from. I'm wondering where this is my uh, actual signal input. It is, ah, oh, yeah, yeah, I get it now. So basically the uh, uh, 50 ohm input is here and there's a ladder, a resistor network on this sort of unit right there. And as you're uh, clicking the attenuation, it's basically engaging voltage dividers on each of these levels. And then at the top of this, we get our signal output which then goes into this uh, cable TV converter uh, module. It was quite interesting. I'm not sure why this board is a daughter board instead of on the main motherboard. It's uh, kind of interesting. I don't know if this is because of, uh, you know, the signals or there's, there's options with these things. It seems like you could squeeze all these chips on the main board if you tried hard enough. So I don't quite know why they would do that. Um, also, it's very interesting that they use this metal tab here to keep the board installed. Um, you know, I just can't explain that. I don't know what that's all about. Here we've got some standard dip chips, uh, an op amp, uh, another op amp. This is a uh, Texas Instruments op amp from, from Portugal, of all places. Uh, I guess, well, this is a European piece of equipment, so it would make sense that it were sourced there. And then this guy right here is a analog uh, multiplexer and demux uh so it's a uh, never really had any experience with a 14053b but uh that's what it is and again you know we're dealing with a basically a radio receiver here so it makes sense to have these sorts of chips on there uh look at this little daughter board it's got a crystal here which looks like it's an eight megahertz crystal then we've got here an mc 154106P PLL. So again, you know, this is a radio receiver. Uh, phase lock loop is something you're going to use in a standard radio receiver, and uh, it's got one. Uh, these other chips here, I don't know if there's anything too interesting. Oh, there's a 74HCO2, uh, so it's a CMOS uh, digital logic. Uh, and let's take a look here. These, I'm just going to do a Google search on these guys here. So oh, 4011, that's pretty straightforward. 
4020 again, digital logic chips. Uh, I'm not sure what that one is. I don't even know who the manufacturer is of this uh, this chip here. And it says ceramic case. Let's take a look. It is a 74, oh no, it's 74HC04. So it's a 7404. Okay, there we go. So another bit of digital logic. Looks like really the only chip that's of interest on this board is this guy right here, which is a PLL. <laughs> this guy's a little bit dusty. There's a, you know, 30 years worth of dust for you right there. Okay, so we're looking at the bottom of the uh, unit here, and it's not too interesting. There's just a couple of fixes they uh, came up with on the board. So we've got a resistor here. We've got a couple of resistors and a diode there. There's this grid pattern on the ground plane, and uh, I guess this is uh, uh, sort of an old-fashioned way of doing things. Correct me if, if I'm wrong, um, but uh, in the 80s and early 90s, they uh, would... Uh, uh, create ground planes like this on RF devices with this grid pattern to reduce eddy currents. And I think that nowadays this isn't very trendy anymore, but uh, back in the day, that's what they were doing. Uh, if anyone knows more about that, uh, feel free to just send me a note in the comments. That would be great. On the front here, we've got the uh, oscillator output. This is going into the uh, 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 tracking generator. So it's just there and uh well you know that cable is i mean let's face facts on a on a high-end spectrum analyzer this is going to be rigid tube coax this isn't going to be you know sort of just uh small uh random coax that they've done here but you know it works it's you know fits the market that it is and uh, that's the way that uh, unit is and then up front, we've got a couple of, uh, you know, it looks like there's a couple of variable resistors in there. You can kind of see them. And then we've got, you know, can barely see what's in there, but it looks like there's more digital logic, which would make sense on this front control display board as you'd have, you know, just digital stuff in there. And then on the other side, we've got, oh yeah, there's that input. And it looks like it's been grounded out to the ground plane of the uh, actual main board. And the whole board itself is also tied into the ground of this frame here so you can kind of see yeah so you can see here uh it's connected to the uh, board so the mainframe itself is connected to this board so everything's grounded together here we've got the tracking generator module same box as the spectrum analyzer uh, circuits are going to be a lot different and they indeed are it is basically an empty box. Look at that. So it's just uh, all empty. And then we've got this board at the back, which is the exact same board that we had in the other module. And there's a, a ribbon cable that connects this module up to the front. And we've got you know, just a very basic display. There's not really much in there. There's just, you know, a couple of components, nothing at all. And everything else, all the good stuff is sealed inside this RF uh, sealed container, which uh, I don't think I have the uh, patience to uh, pull apart today. Again, same con construction as uh, we have on the other module in that there's the input there. This is, looks like the same part. So there's the input here, there's a rail, uh, a ladder of attenuators, and then out at the top we've got our signal output, which is going sneaking down into this, this module here. There's a variable resistor there, a trimmer. We can trim things. I'm not sure what you would be trimming. If you'd be adjusting the output frequencies at all, maybe uh, there's a PLL in here as well. You can adjust them. Actually, I'm sure there is. Um, LED, and that's about it for power. And that's all we have. So yeah, that's really it with this module. It's basically a big empty box. Um, gee, I hope you didn't spend too much on it you didn't get much for the uh, for your money uh no just all joking aside it's you know pretty simple it's just a straightforward uh, frequency generator that tracks the spectrum analyzer well there you have it the hm8028 spectrum analyzer and the matching 8038 tracking generator uh a lot more simple than i thought they would be i mean you know there's no surface mount anything on this board it's all whole through uh uh components most of it is, uh, you know, Jelly Bean uh, Digital Logic, and then they've got this, what appears to be an off-the-shelf cable TV converter module. <laughs> uh, 
built into you know a, a variable bandwidth uh, radio receiver so it's pretty elegant in its own way and uh it met the needs of uh, the market that they were going into so uh yeah it's quite neat and you know this module here is big empty box so that's it um i hope you enjoyed the video and uh you know if you have comments put them below and uh please subscribe if you're not a subscriber and thanks for watching and uh see you next time